It means that you love somebody, that it's really important to you. The thing that makes love really overtake you is having a lot of respect and esteem for somebody else. It's what people do for and with each other as opposed to the words that they say to each other. Honoring myself and honoring other people. Thinking in terms of we instead of me. You're excited um, to see the person. I think it's different for everyone and that's what's so great about love is that it's not, it doesn't need to look a certain way for anyone and, it, and people need different types of love and different amounts of love in their life. It's weathering the storm, going through the hard times um, when you really can't stand each other sometimes. Love makes me think of warm and fuzzy things. Love? Well, I, I love my mom. the cliche of loving yourself before you can love someone else. Um, but I think that that really taken, taken to heart really means a lot. When I was a teenager, I thought there was lots of drama in relationships, and maybe there was at that age. Uh, but I didn't know how comfortable they could be and sort of fun at the same time, sort of safe and comfortable and fun, that it could be really wonderful and that it could get better over time. There's a big spark at the beginning, though. Yeah. You know, there's. There's that, and you have to, I don't know, you have to like work through that part because you, I mean, I, th I think most people know it doesn't, that spark doesn't last forever. We can be passionate together knowing what each other needs instead of at the very beginning with the, Ooh, ah, 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 you know, the, the drama and the constant, you know, trying to figure things out. There's no reason to just date somebody just to date them. You want to make sure that they're the right person and that they're worth spending your time on, they're worth spending your energy, because you have a lot of people in your life and you, it takes a lot to be committed to a person, so don't rush into it. I wish that I knew before I started into relationships that I needed to first have a really healthy relationship with myself. That it's okay to like girls is what I wish I would have known. I didn't appreciate my spouse and the good things about him at the time. I was pretty embroiled in, in what the bad thing was and being overly emotional. And if I had to do it over again, I would have been more appreciative. There are times when you look at that person and say, I'm the luckiest woman alive. And there are other times when you say, oh my God, why did I marry this person? But realizing that that's all part of it. I'm in a relationship right now where um, it started out really casual and then got more serious, but we still um, are in an open relationship. And so just uh, like navigating that um, has been an interesting experience, but also really valuable. Our society gives us one option for what a relationship is. And that is really, it's not perfect for anybody. And then people feel like they're failures for not fitting into these boxes or not making it a success. You know, we have sitcoms, which I don't think give us a very realistic image or experience of what real deep, meaningful and lasting relationships are like. Being someone who's queer, it's really hard to see representations of yourself in a positive, healthy way, because there aren't very many. I learned about um, healthy relationships through my parents, and um, I feel really uh, fortunate that I had them as role models. I don't know that I've ever gotten really any good relationship advice. Don't settle. Just be yourself and be who you are and have them love you for who you are. I think that um, it's hard for people to distance themselves from a relationship to be able to look at it with an objective eye. And that's really important to have friends that are able to be honest with the way that you interact with these people. Um, because sometimes it's not healthy and it's hard, to, it's hard to know when you're in it. My parents have supported me in my relationships. They allow me to make my own choices, but they also guide you 
tell you if they think somebody's right for you, if you, they think you're, they're treating you right. So I think it's important to learn how to listen to those people who have been in your life for a long time that you care about, love, and respect. And if they're asking you about your partner, specifically about if this relationship makes you happy or not, if this relationship fulfills you or not, uh, they're asking those questions for a reason. play nicely and if they don't play nicely they uh they get mad making sure that you finish the fight and actually take the time to make sure to check in and make sure everyone's okay um, but letting yourself fight hiding from fighting doesn't help anything it just the problems don't go away they just build I, I think that there's still a big place for having that person-to-person -person discussion and not trying to avoid conflict by using text messaging, which I have done. <laughs> Taken out of context, without the verbal cues, without having someone to relate to in front of you, things can get blown out of proportion so quickly. And I have just had so many experiences where you realize 10 minutes later after you send a text like, oh my god, that was so hurtful, that was misunderstood. When something is going wrong, um, feeling comfortable enough to tell your partner. Be honest and be true and like no lying, just don't keep an anything inside, just let it out and tell them what you need, what you want, what you like feel should change. Being brave, being really, really brave, um, and being honest and forgiving and communicative. Um, I don't think you can have too much communication ever. Speaking from your heart and, and, and saying you know, what you mean is really important. I think the most important thing for maintaining a healthy relationship is communication. I think you need to be able to trust somebody completely, be able to tell them something and not have a worry that you're telling them too much or you're telling them too little. You need to be comfortable with yourself enough to be comfortable with them. I think they need to um, cooperate and help each other and do some work and then do a little bit more work. I think when you're building a relationship, it, it does take a lot of work. And whenever there's a lot of work put into something, there's also a very big payoff. So I think that feels good too, that you're working to build something one brick at a time to create a stable, healthy relationship that you're proud of, that you're comfortable in, that you flourish in, mm -hmm. that you allow your partner to flourish in. Understanding that your needs and wants aren't always going to be met, but that it's important to voice them. It also takes compromise, you know. I would live my life differently if I wasn't living with Amelia. So, uh, you know, knowing that up front, you know, we, we make compromises, but, uh, you know, it's, it's because we want to. Taking the effort to realize that relationships are a process and that if you ever stop and let it coast on autopilot, it's kind of like driving a car. You know, it might work fine on a straight stretch of highway, but a curve comes and you're going to go right off. Recently, Caleb wanted to get a motorcycle, and I was so stressed about it. He's never wanted a motorcycle before. It was never something of interest to him, and it's something of great stress for me because I, I worry about that. And you know, he was like, "Well, I wasn't sure how to bring it up to you. I wasn't sure how to talk about it." And um, and we did. We talked about it. And I said, "Look, this is this is my feelings on it." And he got to tell me what his feelings were on it and what he needed out of it. And and so it was interesting because I thought. You know, uh, this isn't who I thought he was. I didn't think you were a motorcycle riding guy, but I thought, that's okay. You've grown and changed. You've decided this is what you want to try now, and that's fine with me. Maybe your partner's needs change, and you just support them, and they want a motorcycle, you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't expect that the person you enter a relationship with is going to stay the person that you enter a relationship with, because if it's a good relationship, they're going to change you and you're going to change them and life's going to change you and life's going to change them and hopefully you'll grow and evolve together. We met when we were a lot younger and we did run in the same circles and the thing that attracted me most to Caleb was his 
his uh, respect for himself. That's what I was really looking for. Somebody who was a strong, would stand on their own two feet, you know, really, uh, really be strong individually. He was smart and funny and good looking. He's so funny. He can just make me belly laugh like nobody. And he, you know, and I think probably the, the best thing that I can say about this man is his kind heart. He's just so kind. He cares about other people. In our society, it, love is talked about like this quick, easy emotion instead of the fact that it's an ongoing process. And building a life with somebody takes a lot of compromise, and it takes a lot of understanding, and it takes a lot of knowing who you are, knowing who the other person is, and then knowing who you are together. It's more intense as it goes. Like it's stronger, not like like butterflies in your stomach intense, but just stronger. I think it's kind of superficial. Um, and then like the longer you spend with someone, the more you are able to support each other in more deep ways. So my husband and I have been together since we were 15. And a couple of years ago, we were at a wedding and I was in the wedding, so I was off you know, getting my makeup done and everything with all the other <clears throat> ladies. And we had lunch brought to us in the hotel room. And there were all these sandwiches. And I thought, Lou's really going to be hungry right now because we didn't have lunch. We didn't have any food in our hotel room. So I sort of snuck away with half a sandwich and knocked on the door. And he opened the door. And I'm sitting with a sandwich. And he just, he said, that is why I married you. You just knew exactly what I needed right now. And he sort of couldn't believe how much he really wanted a sandwich. And there I was holding a sandwich. And it was really a tiny little thing. But it was a funny moment that we've actually talked about where we just really understand each other and know what each other needs. And, um, and there's a lot of humor in our relationship, too. But that's sort of an example of, I think, what I mean by understanding what other people's needs are and being able to meet them, even if it's just that you want a sandwich. I like the way she makes me feel, like when I'm around her. And it doesn't feel stifling, it feels like freedom. It feels like uh, a, a positive challenge that we get to build together. I wish someone had told me to value myself um, above a relationship or above the other person in the relationship because it was I've been in very many relationships where I was trying to be something that, I, this ideal of love or this idea of the ideal partner or, um, and I never asked for what I needed. And I think that starting at a young age, you're taught that you're supposed to be this perfect ideal, whatever it is, and that um, that's, not, that's not the point of relationships.